welcome to DC Daily. I'm Clark Wolf, and on either side of me are Sam the Hammer Humphreys and Whitney Moore. Yeah, <laughs> what's up, y'all? Good to see you. Oh, boy. Well, today we have a fun episode for you that you can watch with your kids. Sam is going to interview best-selling YA author Cammie Garcia. Yeah, I am super psyched for this because Cammie is a great writer, novelist, and now writing comics for DC, and she's a very good friend. Uh, we've talked a lot the past couple of weeks on that charity auction stuff that we've been doing. Yes, congratulations yeah. on that success. That was amazing. Thank you. I am Thank so you. excited to hear what she has to say because she's such a diversified writer. She's doing young adult stuff and she's also doing some really, really dark stuff too. So I'm excited to see what she, yeah. what she has to say. I'm going to try and get some of the secrets that she has learned on the dark side of things from all the serial killer profiles that she talks to and yeah. uh, all the cops and murder oh. experts. Wait, this is the episode they're doing. supposed to watch with their kids. I mean... <laughs> pull it back. Pull it back. <laughs> that's an outtake for the episode for Whitney only. Whitney only <laughs> episode. Sorry. Whitney only episode. <laughs> And then later, Hector is going to check in with Jet and Nandi about what's new with DC Kids. We love our DC Kids. Oh, yeah. We do, yeah. And it's great to see them uh, uh, making new episodes from home just like we are. Absolutely. All right, well, since we're yeah. tapping into our youthful side today, I'm curious, mm -hmm. what was your favorite DC superhero when you were growing up, and has it changed? Boy. I feel like my answer is going to be so predictable for anybody who watches the show. Honestly, I mean, same. Yeah, same. obviously Catwoman. <laughs> I feel like, I mean, Batman was, to answer it fairly, Batman was the first superhero, but I mean, DC character, it's always got to be my girl. It's always got to be Catwoman. Well, I could go on four hours about this, but uh, it was really Batman 89, the Michael Keaton movie. That really got me into DC Comics. My favorite became Martian Manhunter. Ooh. Because, yes, I was a huge fan of Justice League International, uh, which is a fantastic, great run of Justice League. Uh, and he was always the leader. He was, as characters came and went, he was the, the center of the book. So he was my favorite DCU character. I love it. Mine will not surprise anybody either. Although Batman came to my fourth birthday party, Superman definitely came to my third birthday party. So what? yeah, I still love Superman to this day and everything that he represents. So uh, yeah, that would definitely be mine. All right, Sam, it's yeah. all you. Take it well, away while, while we watch on mute. All right, see you soon. All right, y'all, I am super excited to welcome to the show today a very talented writer and my good friend, Cami Garcia. Welcome, Cami. Thanks for having me. Oh, thank you for being here. This is weird because you and I were just texting like 20 minutes ago, but this, this question, the fans want to know, how are you doing over there in Maryland? How are you holding up with this quarantine? I'm doing pretty well because I'm usually at home writing anyway. The, mm -hmm. the biggest thing difference is like, you know, I'm not like running out to get snacks and stuff. But other than that, I'm, you know, my job is mostly at home. So I'm fine. Uh, it's obviously a little different to have my kids at home all the time. So I'm not quite as productive. <laughs> Teen Titans Raven was a huge hit. You are following it up with Teen Titans Beast Boy this fall. What can fans expect from this version of Gar's origin? I try to stay very close to the characters if possible because I'm a fan. So his origin story is similar in the sense that he still, um, you know, contracts a virus when he's in West Africa and he's young. But now um, there's something suppressing the effects. And you'll have to wait and read the book, but you'll find out that there's something suppressing the effects and that stops. So all of a sudden, he doesn't know that he has these powers and they're going to start to evolve, which when you're in regular high school is problematic. So he kind of has a balance between um, regular high school problems, girl problems, you know, friend problems, class problems, and turning into animals. And, and, and I know you've got, you've got two teenagers of your own. Have you been pulling from their lives and what you see their high school experiences like for Beast Boy? Uh, yeah, I mean, there are some things I pull directly. Uh, Gar's best friend, since it's an origin story, he doesn't know the Titans yet. So Gar's best friends, um, one is named Stella, which is my daughter's name. 
and uh, yes. uh, she's very wild and spirited like my daughter. And, <laughs> um, and they give me a lot of feedback. It's interesting because they weren't very interested in my novels, but now that I switched to Teen Titans, they actually uh, like to give me some feedback. So it's fun to write something they're excited about. So it's, it's fun, but you also now have two additional editors, which, yes, uh, yes. more yes. notes from especially everybody, daughter. right? Yes. <laughs> And this is your second book together. I, I love a continuing writer artist collaboration. What what has your collaboration been like? How has that evolved from the very beginning of Raven up through Beast Boy? Gabriel's fabulous. Um, when I first signed on with DC to do the Titans and Raven, they gave me a lot of different artists to look at. And um, I'm a huge artist fan, so I loved everyone's work, but I kind of in my mind knew what I wanted. I really wanted, um, the Teen Titans, like the characters to look like regular teenagers. Mm -hmm. And I had seen Gabriel's work on Pinterest and I showed it to one of the editors and I said, I kind of want this. And they said, well, no one really does this except for this kid. And what Gabriel had done was as a fan, he had started drawing his own Teen Titans in regular clothes, Nikes, you know, hoodies with their backpacks. T-shirts. Totally. So like cool. um, his Starfire was like a NASA t-shirt. Yeah. So, I just figured, you know, I was giving them a reference and they said, well, we're going to contact him. And which I thought was totally cool for a big company to be like, we're going to contact, you know, this guy who isn't a traditional comic artist. Yeah. And um, it was problematic. Gabriel did not respond to several emails. He thought it was a prank. <laughs> Playing and hard I, to get, huh? Yeah. And I said, what made you think it was a prank? And he said, well, it was the logo. And I said, so the like the real DP <laughs> logo was what made it seem fake. But he just said it was too good to be true. He didn't believe it. And then finally they got him to respond. And, um, you know, and I've had him on the project ever since. And it's really fun because we're very collaborative. Um, yeah. We plan everything together. We talk about the characters. I really believe that like the artist is my co-author basically because mm -hmm. the art is also Absolutely. telling the story. So yeah. we have a lot of fun. Um, but he was dying to do Beast Boy. That's awesome. You, you know when you can make an artist day that you're going to get an incredible, incredible page out of it. Speaking of franchises, we first met on a panel because we were both working on Harley books. We're on a Harley Quinn panel. You are writing a Joker, Harley, Criminal Sanity for DC's Black Label. The new issue, issue four, is out this week. What can fans expect to see out of this? So for people who haven't read the series, it is uh, it's very different than your traditional Joker Harley relationship. It's a procedural. It's kind of like uh, Criminal Minds or True Detective meets Gotham. And uh, Harley is a clinical psychiatrist, forensic psychiatrist, but she's also a profiler working with the GCPD. And she is hunting a very prolific serial killer, the Joker. And um, so there, this is not a love story. <laughs> they do not fall in love. Um, <laughs> this is very dangerous. Uh, it's really fun to write. I have a consultant who works with me. His name is uh, Dr. Ed Kurtz. And he makes sure that, like, we work to make sure that everything is very authentic. And mm -hmm. that's one of the things that's the most fun for me is, you know, we come up with these murder scenes and, you know, we make sure there's there, everything is forensically and uh, psychiatrically accurate. So it's really fun to do. It's kind of a dream project. I worked on it a long time before I pitched it. So yeah, well, you really get into research for this kind of stuff. And we always joke that one day when I'm going to need to dispose of a body, uh, you're going to be my first text. Uh, yeah. But this, this book really does get into some really dark, heavy stuff. And I'm just curious if like, how that affects you mentally to like get in that headspace and write these kind of scenes. Yeah, I mean, I think because that's kind of, that's my jam. Like my, I am very like, I love to write teen, teen titans, or I want, if I write adult, it's very dark. There's not a lot of- <laughs> Nowhere in between, all extremes for Cammy. <laughs> yeah, dark or light. And I was considering writing a serial killer, like adult thriller before I took this on. So for me, I, since I like to read that kind of thing, it doesn't really bother me. But now that other people see it, like editors and stuff, like now I'll warn my agent, like, okay, don't read this when you're eating. Or like, you know, <laughs> she'll be like, could you just tell me when these pages are coming at the very beginning? Like, you know, do not read with meal. This is, so this is like I a no that, meatball sub zone. Do no, not eat a meatball totally sub. It totally affects other this. people, I think, more than it affects me. For me, yeah. it's... Um, 
it's really like the science of it and the psychology and like getting in the head of, I try to treat Joker like he's a real person. I'm sure I'm on a lot of watch lists. Just, from my just, just your Google searching alone. You're just, you're going to get an iMessage from FBI saying, I know how uh, to do, don't think about I know, it. I know how to do weird things. I know how to melt body fat, um, like in, in the like pre-Columbian manner, not the, you know, the way one would do it today. Oh, wow. I hope no one's doing it at all. Um, sure. But just in case. And <laughs> issue four is my favorite so far. It, Why is that? Uh, the because the each one has a murder um, that he's executing, mm -hmm. and the one in four is really amazing. And then there's also a big turn in four, where there's kind of a moment that I've been waiting to write, and I've been waiting for readers to to get to, and yeah. now they're going to get to it. So I'm like, I'm going to be really interested to see what the feedback is, yeah. which is why when I do events, very often they'll have me, you know, like I did an event where I was signing with Jason and Gabriel. And I was right. in the middle and I had little, you know, it was uh, a comic con. I had, you know, little kids coming up that looked like 10 or 11, you know, with their sample <laughs> sampler of Joker. And I literally said to their parents, like, I will sign this for him, but you need to read this. This is not for a 10 year old. <laughs> yeah. You, me and our friend Gwenda Bond have been organizing Creators for Comics, the charity auction on Twitter for uh, comic book stores and indie bookstores that have been hit hard by Corona. Uh, tell me, I wanna know like what are some, what are gonna be some of the memories you look back on most from this whole experience? Um, Creators for Comics was so interesting because it really just started as like wanting to help. And then I was talking to you and Gwenda separately and it was like, okay, well you're both gonna help me, right? And then we like all put our <laughs> ideas together and you know, ask Brian, uh, Brian Michael Bendis and Bill Jimenez to help. But I think the thing that was the most remarkable to me, I've organized book festivals. Like I'm very comfortable asking people I don't know to do something for a good cause. But what I was really shocked by was just everyone said yeah. Like everyone was yeah. in. Mm -hmm. Usually you get a lot of people who are like, I don't know, I'm really busy. And even the people in the beginning that were like, I'm really busy, the next day they write back, we're like, you know what, I just, I found this like, you know, sketch, cover sketch that I never shared and I'm gonna auction that. So it's like having this tribe of people where you all love the same thing. And the thing that we love is the, you know, the spirit of, of comic shops and indie bookstores where you go in and you find your tribe and your people. And they all just have such a deep love for these stores and, wanted to do everything they could to keep them open. Yeah, I, I kept saying that if you if you scratch the surface on any nerd, you will find one or two yeah. comic book stores that will live on in their heart forever. Tammy, thank you for being on the show. Really appreciate it. This is a lot of fun. And um, you know, I'll text you in 20 minutes, I'm sure. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Everyone at home, you can download Joker Harley Criminal Sanity issue four now and keep an eye out for Teen Titans Beast Boy this fall. And speaking of young adults, Hector is going to see what's cool with DC Kids. Check it out. Hey, gang, it's Hector, and I'm here with the DC Kids. Great to see you, Jet and Nandi. How you doing? <laughs> Pretty good. Hi, how good. You? How are you? Good, good, good. We're all hanging out at home these days, and I've never experienced this before, and I know that you guys definitely haven't. So I want to chat with you guys about how you've been doing and what you and uh, and all of your friends think about all of this. How, how are you guys coping? How's everybody doing? Uh, I think it's definitely different from anything anyone's really experienced. Uh, I was joking with my friends actually the other day. I was like, I really wish I wasn't living through a huge historical event right now. Because <laughs> um, this is definitely going to be in history books in the near future. But I guess that's kind of cool. Because I can be like, oh, I lived through that, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Jed, how about you? Yeah, it's been it's been cool, weird. I mean, I've just been playing video games and doing homework, <laughs> but you know, I got to sleep in. It's definitely a very, like Nani said, very different. But um, other than that, it's been good, great. <laughs> it's just like it's such a weird feeling of it feels like every day is now the weekend. You know, I can imagine you guys probably feel like that, but it's also making me really appreciate how much I took stuff for granted, like going to places, seeing my friends, do you know what I mean? Like I, like I miss going to comic book stores and going to Same. work and going yeah. to all these places. So yeah, it's been weird. Well, yeah. the good news is DC Kids is still doing new shows. So what's it been like <laughs> recording at home? 
Ooh, it's been so much fun. Uh, we actually, we just yeah. recorded an episode today and we had to like recreate uh, like a bunch of superhero poses and it was so much fun. I had to use a shoelace and like a broom and a coat hanger. <laughs> and then I guess since we have so much time, I'm practicing my Catwoman skills. Very cool, very yeah, cool. Jet, what's smart. it been like uh, doing shows from home? It's been weird. I love it though. It's been so much fun. Like like how Nandi said, yeah, we had to do poses and I've been I've been tapping into the speed force. So <laughs> I'm pretty I'm getting pretty fast. Very no, cool. Yeah, but it's been it's been really fun. I have like a bunch of capes and sticks everywhere just from doing a lot of that stuff. It's been a lot of fun. That's really fun. great. Yeah. Yeah, no, we've also been doing, you know, DC Daily from home and and me and the rest of the DC Daily cast, we're like, this is a highlight of our week. It's so great to see each other and to be able to geek out about stuff. It's it, it's always fantastic. So yeah. uh, here's an exciting thing. Since now we have more time at home, we're staying home and we're staying safe. And Jet, uh, I've heard that you've been watching one of my favorite shows of all time. You're at home, you're staying safe, and you're diving back into Batman the Animated Series. What's that been like? Yes. Oh! the best show ever i love it so much the animation and the voiceovers it's just incredible diving back into that universe yeah do you have a favorite uh, era of the show because i love the new batman adventures oh, when they sort of came you know right yes. came back after a little bit yes yes oh i really like the animation and art style and yeah i see those back there it's awesome <laughs> and i uh, i love the episode over the edge that might be my favorite one how the cops are just going after Batman, Nightwing, and Robin, the whole gang. Jet, it's, that's my favorite episode, too. That's no my way. my favorite episode of the whole thing. Yeah, it's awesome. You're it, my it, best friend. It's a, you're my best friend. <laughs> no, I love that episode. It chokes me up. It's such a great... I don't yeah. want to give it away, so in case people have never seen yeah, it. Yeah, I'm but not going to say it. It is one of the most intense, and I still remember when I saw that when it's they crazy. aired it on TV for the first time, it blew my mind. The episode opens with Commissioner oh. Gordon, Bullock... And the GCPD breaking into the Batcave to I, arrest oh Batman. Oh my! Right? <laughs> and Commissioner Gordon's like he's like pointing a gun down at Batman and Robin as they're running to the thing, and he goes, "Not this time, Bruce. Not this time." And you're like, "What's oh. going on?" And then Alfred tackles him, and he goes, "Go, sir, go!" And then Alfred Dude, gets arrested. Goosebumps. And Batman's like, "Alfred!" And then they have to keep going. It's amazing. It's fantastic. I know. And then they throw the grenade. <laughs> Batman grabs Robin, and they jump. <laughs> They meet uh, under. Yeah. Uh, I'm not going to say it. Oh, it's give so me good. goosebumps. I love it. <laughs> it's Man, my that's favorite cool. show of all time. Oh. The, the great thing about that show is, is that I remember watching it when I was a kid. I remember watching it even when I was younger than you guys. And yet, if I go back and watch it now, it's like a different experience. Like, you can watch that show at different times in your life and you'll take away something something completely different from it. So, so it's always yeah. cool to revisit. It's always cool to, you know, to see how you think differently about stuff from when you were a kid and you watch it. You're like, ah, oh, that's cool. I like Batman. And then as an adult, you're like, man, they're really... <laughs> Yeah. This is real. Yeah. This is crazy. <laughs> it's, yeah. And like, and I get, you get to like see different things you didn't see before and you get to watch it over. Like, totally. you know, Jack Napier's The Joker in the DCAU. And I'm like, mm-hmm. whoa. Mm-hmm. You know, Batman Mask yeah. of the Phantasm. He's the mobster. Ah. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, Man. that's an exciting. That's an action figure. I still got to get a bunch of more Batman villains. You see here at the bottom. I got to fill that out. Oh, I see that. A, that's the next Catwoman. ones I'm gonna get. I'm gonna get Joker and Two Face. And anyway, um, but uh, there's so many exciting things happening recently, and they recently re-aired a television event, Crisis on Infinite Earths. Nandi, oh, yeah. I know you're a huge <laughs> Supergirl fan. What did you think of that crossover event? Well, first off, I want to say, the more I hear you and Jet talk, the more I realize Jet is literally a younger version of you. (laughs) (laughs) The way you guys bounce off each other, it's like, damn, all right. (laughs) There's one in every generation. Oh, Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. (laughs) But I, okay, first off, like, there was, in the Flash show, um, there is, like, an episode where it's, like, Supergirl and the Flash together, and I have to say, I I ship them so much. I think that they're, like, the cutest (laughs) couple I like really like them together so that was my favorite part like seeing them together again I was like I just wish there was a possibility where like they could actually you know hit something off yeah every at one point like every multiverse had disappeared like they were all destroyed and then by the end of it since you're such a big supergirl and flash fan and shipper and you're not the only one believe me there's there are many (laughs) more people who love them together by the end of it this amazing thing happened. Both of their universes merged into one. 
So it's now the Flash, awesome. now Barry and Kara, like they're in the same universe and they've always been, which is amazing. Maybe, maybe there's a possibility they can get together. <laughs> I'm maybe. crossing my fingers. I'm, I'm really hoping so. You know what's great about being a comic book fan is that even if we never get to see that in the show between Barry and Kara, and I agree, they have such an amazing chemistry. They're so great. Uh, and they're such great friends too. But even if we never get to see it, the shows have now established there is an infinite multiverse. In one of those universes, they have to be together. <laughs> they have to. There's no way. There's no way. I I will sue if they're not. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, I don't have that. No, I'm not doing that. But I'm no, I'm I'm really excited to see what happens in the near future. And I think that there's quite a big possibility that they could maybe in one maybe. of the universes. Who knows? Hopefully. I mean, now now they're you know they're better super friends than ever. At the end of that crossover, they established like yeah. a sort of Justice League, and they had everybody there. And Black Lightning was there, and and Kara was there, and Flash oh, yeah. was there, and it's crazy. And they're even looking for maybe a genetically engineered monkey named Gleek, who used <laughs> to be from the Wonder Twins and the Super Friends. Like that was even a part of the show, which is so uh, crazy. So yeah, yeah. Well, uh, I think I uh, I think we're winding down, and I need to seriously ask you guys a question. Mm -hmm. What advice do you two have for me with what I should be doing with all of this free time? Am I supposed to join TikTok? Is that what we're supposed <laughs> to do? Am I supposed to be on TikTok? Honestly, it's not a bad idea. They have some pretty <laughs> good dances there, I must say. Uh, and it, it does take up quite a bit of your time. I just recently spent more than half of my day trying to learn one dance. So <laughs> Okay. Jet and Nandi, it has been so fantastic catching up with you guys. It's so great to see you. Thanks for logging on with me today. <laughs> yes, thank you. thank you. This was so much fun. I love talking to you, man. This is uh, awesome. <laughs> you guys are the best. You guys are awesome. You guys can watch <laughs> new episodes of DC Kids on YouTube, which is fantastic. And now we're going to get you back over to the DC Daily Crew. Oh, that was so fun. Aren't kids the best, especially when they're not yours? Ah. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> exactly right. <laughs> no, but really, really great interviews. That was wonderful. I love those kids, and they're like, they're, they know their stuff just as much as we do. They are big time nerds. You'll love to see I feel see like it. they know their stuff even more than we do. Like, they, they have a level of knowledge. I, I feel like they, they started early, you know? They have young brains that are sponges <laughs> and not calcified yes. by wisdom and learning they, that we've done. That's, yeah. that's good save. Yeah. Good save, Sean Grace. <laughs> <laughs> and friends, DC Universe is nominated for a Webby Award. Yay! Woohoo! <laughs> Head over to vote.webbyawards.com and cast your pick for the best media streaming website and help us win. Voting ends on May 7th, so don't sleep on this. Do we get a sticker if we voted? We should. Ding, ding, ding. Oh, maybe a I'm virtual sticker. order some sticker. online and then virtual oh, yeah, sticker. virtual stickers. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Bitmojis. <laughs> All right, that's it for us today. We will catch you next time. Bye. Bye y'all. Bye.